Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Medium Kim, and I have with me wonderful Susan Lynn, Psychic Medium. And most of you probably know her, but we are going to be talking today about raising your vibes. We're talking about guides and whatever else interesting topics we may come across. So welcome, Susan. Thank you. Great to be here. Yay. Uh, yeah, this is our first time to do this. I've been on your channel a long time ago. Yeah, we need to do this more often. If, if you're watching this, uh, Kim and I teach a lot. So we actually do a lot, quite a few classes together. So we work together very often, but you don't often see us together in a video, I guess. That's true. Yes. And so I really am curious, though, I have some questions for you, um, mainly because we are going through a very dark period. And I believe, and I, I'm pretty sure you would agree with me, we all need help navigating through this uh, time on earth, our planet yeah. earth. And it, to me, it's, a, you know, this consciousness that we're in, um, where it's being revealed to us that there's a lot of darkness. <laughs> so how would you, dear one, <laughs> raise your vibes, raise your, how do you cope day to day? What is your daily routine to help you get through these days? Great question. Great question. So <laughs> given the fact that, that people may be watching this video at any time and they may not know what we're talking about right now yeah. is uh, we're going through this time on the planet where there's a lot of division and um, uncertainty and change. And also at the same time as uh, Ukraine is, is being um, you know invaded by Russia. So that's basically what we're talking about as far as how uh, the vibration feels a little bit hard or dark to us at this time and how I deal with it is it's very interesting I learned when when I started uh, kind of accepting my met, my metaphysical abilities I realized that to do this work I needed to raise my vibration I realized that for me to communicate with my spirit guides I needed to treat myself in a loving way because they love us unconditionally. And when we don't, we're not positive about ourselves or we nitpick ourselves or we're critical of ourselves, we're, we don't match their vibration. So it's very hard to get that guidance from them. And I, I wanted to connect with them and th I knew I needed to do this. So a few years ago, I started raising my vibration. One of the things that I do is I'm very conscious of my own self-talk. Uh -huh. So you may, you may, some people might call themselves or they may even say it out loud, I'm so dumb. Or I just have put on so much weight, I'm fat. Or I just, you know, whatever, bad thing about themselves. And so I started addressing that in my own head, in my own interior talking. So instead of saying, gosh, Susan, you really messed that up. That was a big screw up. You know what I mean? I would catch myself and I would say, okay, gosh, Susan, that was hard. What you went through was really hard and you did your best and you're learning from this experience. And given that you've learned so much from this experience, I think next time you're going to do it differently. Mm -hmm. Now, can you see the difference between those two things? Yeah. The energy in the second one is supportive, is loving. The first one is harsh, critical. And so that's yes. the first thing I do is, is I really have changed the way I talk to myself. And, and, mm -hmm. I, and I've had a few years of this and I'm telling you that I've experienced some pretty big, um, you know, letdowns and I've, I've managed to continue to talk to myself in this way. So that's one thing. Now, secondly, you have to be conscious of what you bring into your awareness. So uh -huh. if you're uh -huh. going to be bringing in negativity in all different kinds of ways, it could be the news. It could be um, that you're watching very scary movies or uh, alarming types or, or violence. You, you might be watching violent things. I mean, you know, yes. whatever. That's yes. going to, that's really going to have an impact on your vibration. So I try to also, it's just like eating healthy, right? So let's consume healthy energy. I want to consume joy. I want to consume humor, especially if you're going through a hard time in your life or the world is going through a hard time. Our natural inclination is to want to know. 
Yeah. What's going on? What's going on? I need to know. I need to know. Well, mm -hmm. of course we want to know. We don't want to be citizens of the world that, that don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But you have to drink it in teaspoons, not yes. gallon jugs, right? You have to bring yeah. this information in, in, in sort of, you might want to call it, I'm on a need to know basis. I yes. know things are happening in the world, but I don't need to spend five hours watching it. Now, does that mean I'm always successful? No, sometimes things catch my attention and I go down the rabbit hole and I spend a lot of time watching some news item that might be negative and mm -hmm. that definitely brings my energy down i catch myself the point here is to catch yourself right yes, wherever you yes. are to sort of catch yourself and say oh boy that was a lot i took again you're not going to be negative you're going to say i took in a lot of you know kind of yucky energy i think i'm going to turn it off and uh -huh. i think i'm going to cleanse my energy by watching something fun taking a walk in nature uh you know, gardening, doing a hobby, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like you've switched your thinking to being a guide for yourself. You know, because that that's how good. guys would guides would look. I mean, in my opinion, that's how they would look at us, you know, in that's a right, loving yeah. way and also a detached way. Because if they got all harried about what we were up to, they would not be very effective guides. Right. Uh, don't you think? Yeah. And yeah. So, I mean, that takes a skill, you know, a, a learned skill. I believe that what you're talking about um, and maybe also to just have more to, uh, you know, sometimes to take away or heal our past self-talk and it, the self-talk could be coming from, you know, your parents or your family or your friends back when you were, you know, one year old, all that. So it's, it's a lot of healing. So to get to that point, I think it takes a lot of healing. Uh, what, what do you think about writing messages on the mirror or in your refrigerator, you know, positive affirmations? Does that help? Yes, I did that in the very beginning as well. Um, you know, there's so many things you can do. That's a really good idea. Another one is mirror work where you uh -huh. look in the mirror and, and this is, was hard for me in the beginning. You look in the mirror and you say, I love you. And, you know, you look in the mirror and say, you know, you're worthy of love or you're beautiful or you're perfect. Um, you know, if you, yeah. if the thought of that, looking in the mirror and saying those things about yourself makes you squeamish, then yeah. that's an indication yeah. that you could benefit from doing that kind of work. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I see this so often with, you know, doing readings, people just don't feel, I mean, it's pretty common. I got, I'm going to say what 90% of the people do not feel worthy. Yeah. And, and like, and, and then there's a guilt about something. It could even actually be guilt from past life. Today, I did a reading. This lady was guilty from a past life that she was a doctor. She didn't heal um, those people. So she's still carrying that forward. Wow. Yeah. Interesting, so we, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you have no idea. I mean, you wouldn't have any idea unless you got a reading. I mean, you, this isn't something you would, you might not know. And then mm -hmm. hopefully mm -hmm. she was able to separate that yeah. from her current life and get some relief from that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's going to be a little bit of a process, but yes. Um, yeah. That's what's, what's, that is wonderful about past life healing. Cause you never know what happens, but I don't want, I don't want, that's another rabbit hole we could talk about, but okay. Um, now, so do you have a daily routine that you do? So, I mean, I have a daily routine. I'll just tell you my daily routine. That this is what helps my vibes and it's it works even if I don't want to. I mean, you know, I don't want to, if I'm tired or whatever. Like last night, for instance, I went out late. Or kind of, well, it's kind of late. For me, eight was late. Eight is late. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> But I did go to a nice dinner for my, you know, for my son's birthday. We went to quote kind of fancy, right? So it was a little bit of a long dinner. Anyway, so I woke up this morning and I was tired and uh, I did not want to do my normal routine, which is my normal routine, which I'm loving right now is I, I get my yoga mat out and um, I do my daily energy routine and I do a few yoga things. And that for some reason just switches things for me. So that's my like, okay, go to one of my go-tos for raising my vibes. Even if it's a tiny little stretch or, or even another thing I like to do is feed the birds. 
I, I get up in the morning. First thing I do, I'm still in my pajamas, whatever. And that makes me feel good. I go out, I fill all the bird feeders, I give them fresh water, I crack the ice open. I even put hot water in there so that the water's not too cold for them. Oh. You know, <laughs> I, I put awesome. the hummingbird, I put the hummingbird food in the microwave, warm it up a little bit so that they don't have, so that they have warm food when they, <laughs> and oh. I'm just doing something like that makes me feel good, you know? And so I think even if we just give to nature or, you know, the first three sips of your coffee or tea or whatever, an affirmation of, it could be, I love myself. I am beautiful. I am worthy. That would be a wonderful thing of a mindfulness to pay attention to what our thoughts are. Absolutely. And check in with yourself even, and just say, how do I feel this morning? Something that empaths do is we often feel the energy that isn't ours. So sometimes you might wake up in the morning and think, oh, something bad is happening. Or I feel a sense of impending doom yeah. and I don't know why. And then it colors you, it colors your day. It makes you gloomy. And we never take a chance or an opportunity to say, is this my energy? You know, let me check and see, is this mine? And if mm -hmm. you, you just takes a simple second to say, oh, no, this isn't me. I feel good. And my family feels good. And my house feels good. Well, this isn't mine. It's because I'm an empath. I can feel it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a prayer for it. And then I'm going to push it out of my energy. And so checking in with yourself in the morning is one way to just, you know, just see, so you don't carry that with you all day by accident. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I check in with myself in the morning. And for me, I'm a big I like to walk. So I, and I know you do this too. I walk my dog every morning. Um, it's my time to think. It's my time to connect with nature. Um, it's my time to give thanks. Uh, so that's kind of something that I do religiously every morning. And it helps because my dog requires me to do it. You know, she yes. bothers me. She reminds me if, yeah. if it was just up to me, I'm sure that I would let some other task <laughs> get in right. the way. I um, know. but yeah, I, I do try to meditate in the morning. I don't always do that, but, um, but I do a variation of those kinds of things in the morning to just sort of set the tone for the yeah. day. Yeah. And you know, another thing too, I noticed Susan Lynn, if, if I start, if I open my email, before oh. I do anything, oh, forget it. I'm, I could be there three hours later and still haven't done anything. I haven't fed the birds, haven't walked the dog. And, you know, I guess, isn't that why they call dogs? What, isn't that God backwards? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's why they want you to go out and see God. The dogs want you to go see God outside in the flowers and in the, the trees of nature, the fa see the face of God and, or what, whatever you want to call it, the source. The of course, we're dog lovers. I'm sure the cat lovers also think that, uh, you know, cat. I, I think you would agree that all of our animals, whether you have a parrot or a cat or a pig, it doesn't matter. They they keep you in the moment. Yeah. You know, they keep you focused in the moment because they need to be petted or fed or let out or let in yeah. or attended to, and that helps you focus on your current, you know, energy, not on email or work or whatever. Right. And kids, and kids do the same thing. Kids. Keep yeah. Animals. Well, yeah. Kids, but, but at least the thing about animals, though, also, there is a lot of studies. I'm sure you've heard this by having an animal, just petting an animal brings your blood pressure down, brings the stress level down. I don't know. Is it oxytocin? I mean, there's got to be some hormones involved in this around this connection. And also, what if you don't have anybody else to love in your life? That animal is everything. And I think some of us have been so isolated the last two years that we have really depended on our animals. I mean, I, I know I am. And, and, you know, she doesn't, she certainly can't drive me to the store, but she certainly is <laughs> a wonderful, you know, being of love. And they love us unconditionally, right? That's the thing too. I mean, even cats. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, they cats. love us unconditionally. They, they, it's a good way for us to see and accept love and to give love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's one, another way to raise the vibes. You know, um, I was thinking too, even if we, we feel like we're kind of like, um, can't do anything, 
like we're frustrated, like what can I do that's happening? And as you know, too, everybody is becoming more sensitive, becoming more empath. Our empath, empathicity, I don't know if that's the word, empathicity, yeah. you know, is increasing. Our global consciousness is increasing. So what can we do? Maybe even just the idea of lighting a candle. Yes. Uh, for the people that are in service, for the people that have passed, you know, in honor of the people that are in that are in the middle of it now, a lighting a candle, maybe even putting a candle with crystals around it that give them more light of their in their day. And imagine that light is going out across the world. Maybe even putting a silk scarf around the can, you know, around the, the base of the crystals so that you're sending that color also, a healing color, blue, pink, green, sending that over. I love it. That's beautiful. Recently, I saw Archangel Michael in a vision. He had a, the sword, of course, we know, but he had on his sword, and, we, and it was about, I was you know, thinking about the Ukraine thing, and it said joy on the sword. So maybe even imagine a sort of joy around all those who need it. Yeah. Oh, these are times, these are some times, aren't, aren't they? Um, so let me ask you this, Susan, now changing the subject a bit now, uh, back to the guides, because I know that you have talked so much about your guides, you know, the, you know, they're helping you pick out the, the stuff at the grocery store. So I'm curious, is this like an ongoing conversation? Like you wake up in the morning to the bedtime or do they just come in like, okay, hey, Susan, make sure you turn right. I mean, I know we've, I heard this story about, you know, having to buy the gas, the gas, something or other. You had to buy something. I, I, I think it was a gas can or, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I know there's more of those. I know, but, but so that, you know, when they keep nudging you in a certain direction, do they focus on one area or is it random or is it everything? What would you say? That's such a great question. That's such a great question. First of all, I find that they they will work with you all the time. And first of all, I want to tell you that everybody that everybody has guides. People ask me, "Do I have a guide?" And it shocks me because uh, yes, we all have our own personal guides. Okay. Now, for me, I feel like when I give them permission. Um, to help me with something like for, for me, one of the things that I talk a lot about is my diet. So I, I ask for help. And when you ask for something, you, it would helps if you ask from your heart and mm -hmm. not from your brain, like it, intellectually, I know I need help, but when you ask from in here, that's when it's really serious, right? That's when they really know that you're on board. So when that mm -hmm. happens, I we have helper guides. So we have our main guide, but then we have these helper guides that come in. So I find that I interact more with my helper guides than my main guide. My main guide is like the principal of the school, you know, kind of an overseer kind of guide. And yet the helper guides are more like the teachers. They're there that help me. So um, that's one thing. Another thing is, is that if your brain, if you're thinking, 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 they just can't get in. You know, they can't get through all of that thinking. That's why meditation is so helpful to help us get in touch with our guides. But so is like what you do, just doing some stretching, some energy work, walking the dog, doing a, a hobby, um, exercising. Any of those things are quasi meditative and will open a little, a little passageway for your guides to come in and, and talk to you. So it's pretty random for me. Um, if if we're working together on something, and I know we are, then they'll pop in. It's very, it's funny. They don't pop in every, every day necessarily. And it's interesting to me when they do, like sometimes I will get something out of the freezer and they'll say, you're not going to like that. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, we'll see. <laughs> and I microwave it. It's some kind of dinner. And I'm like, I didn't like that. That's terrible. You know, um, or if I'm at the store, sometimes they'll direct me towards something. Now, if I'm thinking, I want this, you know what I mean? It's yeah. going to be hard for them to yeah. get through that. But yeah. if I'm considering this or that, I feel that they'll nudge me towards the, the healthier version. 
Does that make yeah. sense? Does that? Understand? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that reminds me too, when you energy test for food, you know, whether you use your body as a pendulum or however you do your energy test, if you want it so bad, you can overcome the energy, you can make it positive. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I so, did not know if that. If you think, if you're going to energy test the question, like, is ice cream good for me? You know, it's probably really not, but then, but I really, if you really love ice cream, you can make it positive. You can make, yes, wow. I, ice cream is good for me. <laughs> wow. Wow. So yeah. do you believe in the, in the energy testing where you do it like this, where you break apart, does that work or no? Um, I've seen people use that. I do, you know, what I've seen people use that for is in the garden where you want to plant your flowers and your plants, you can energy test where you plant, how you plant, set up your garden. And if you do that, by the way, and that's one of the things they do it, this is the, uh, you know, that, that kind of the little finger and the thumb together uh -huh. and, and you're, and you're asking the plant. Where would you like to be planted? And you're thinking, okay, that spot, then you can energy like a yes or a no. The yes is strong. Now, some so people- you're linking little, them together, right? Yeah, I am. Uh -huh. But I tend to, honestly, I, because see, I think I can even override this. Uh -huh. So I tend to just go within and I get a yes and a no that way. Uh -huh. um, and you know, the, I get more of a light or not light. That's how I get it more. But if you're doing it, and if you're at the store, you'll also, if you practice, you'll just know by looking at something good, not good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you'll yeah. know. So, uh, but if you're in the grocery store, you know, I, I, and I talked about this before, you put it on your, on your like belly button and you hold it there. And do you lean forward or back with it on you? So your body's a pendulum. Going forward is good. Going backwards is not good. But anyway, that's what we're off the set. We got it. We got and wait, and I'm laughing because then do you just like put the ice cream on your belly, lean back and put it in the cart anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. I, I, okay. I knew this was bad for me, but I'm overriding you all. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, well, I mean, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily I'm not an ice cream person, but I am a chocolate person. So. Oh, right. Right. But you know, there is a difference in the chocolates and there's a difference in yeah. sugar and yeah. you can test even organic sugar versus inorganic or non-organic, whatever. And there's a difference. Like my body tests okay for organic sugar. Now, maybe I'm overriding it, but it doesn't test good for the regular sugar. So. And this is something that people, in my opinion, and you can chime in, please, with your opinion. I, I feel like this is something you sort of have to practice and you have to refine yes it's not like you can be taught to do this and then boom it's not like tying your shoes in other words it's you kind of have to get one with your body uh -huh. and be able to accept that information um you know either hearing it or feeling the yes or the no or mm -hmm. even using the muscle testing because where i run into trouble and i think this is a common thing my ego or my uh -huh. brain, if my brain really wants something, whether it's chocolate or, or, or it's to do something and my guides say, no, I have a hard time hearing that uh -huh. because right. your brain, your ego is going to be the loudest voice right. in the room. If it's emotional or anxiety or fear, those kinds of things, your right. brain is very, your ego is very loud. Plus you have free will. You know, your guides can tell you all they, I mean, and you know yourself, right? What's good and not oh. good for you, but you have free will. Yeah. So they can only suggest, but you can practice on this pendulum test though, with something, you know, is bad for you. And it's very, it's actually pretty instant. Um, I mean, to do it a few times and then you get the hang of it, but like practice with something like Drano. Now you're talking about pendulum with your body, just so yeah. that people don't get confused. She's talking oh, yes. about your body going back and going forward. Okay. So yeah, try something poisonous. Right. <laughs> right. And then feel how that's such a good idea. You could actually go to the grocery store yeah. and pick yeah. up something, you know, like bleach or Drano or Windex and yep. say, is this good for me to ingest? You always have to word your question, you know, good for mm -hmm. you is. Well, it might be good for your windows, right? If it's Windex, but is it good for me to ingest? That's a great idea. Other than yeah. you might look a little interesting in the store. I'm, I'm over that. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> right. 
but but it's actually so when you're when you're um now this is we are getting off the subject but i still want to finish this because when you have a vibration of one object and a vibration of your body and you're blending the two vibrations together it's either going to make you stronger or weaker even whether it's ingest or, or not ingest it's the vibration of it so it's so so it could you could even test shoes like you put on some new shoes you could even test paint colors or whatever so when you put the vibe that new object into your body's field although when you do this on your stomach it is with the intention of ingesting because you're putting it right here on your stomach so i think but anyway we could, could you put but, it on your heart if it's just good for you maybe um i don't try it out not sure i haven't tried that give it a try <laughs> but, i'm going but, to yeah yeah okay but i want to ask you a little more about guides so you know um because I've had some interesting, my guides have come in, in you know, with some interesting things. And I wonder, are, are, you know, we have this big oversoul, you know, do our guides come from our own oversoul? Do they come from another oversoul? How do they, how do we match up with our guides? Well, how, well I mean, I mean, I know we probably can't prove what we're going to say, but what is your, uh, you know, philosophy on this? Well, so I want to say that, so what she's talking about with over soul is also what some people call higher self, yes. which is that part of our consciousness or divine spark or whatever that stays up there through all of our incarnations. So our higher self knows everything about us. It knows our first life and this life, and it knows everything. It's part of us and it's divine. It stays in the divine. And then for me, right under the higher self is your spirit guide. Um, so if you wanted to put it in a hierarchy, that's how I would do it. So the spirit guides in my, and again, she's right. Like we don't really, neither one of us are God. You know, we don't really know exactly, but this is kind of what our intuition and our experience has, has told us. Um, your spirit guide, your main spirit guide has usually incarnated on earth and that's important because mm -hmm. they know what you're going through this is a very unusual assignment right to be a human on earth is a very unusual thing it, it, you go you're going through a lot of um different things between gravity and competition and human and earth changes and so many interesting things that are really human um, so that spirit guide knows what it's like to be human. So, um, now how did they get, do they get assigned to us? I feel like when I look at that information, I feel like a lot of times in my clients that not always, but often, let's say 85 to 90%, that spirit guide has incarnated with that person at some uh -huh. point. I mean, it could have been. 20 lifetimes ago or five lifetimes ago or who knows what but yeah. they have some connection to each other right they right, get I agree. each other you yeah. know what i mean they they get each other and they yeah. get you yep um that's why my guides are funny they know that if they make me laugh i'm gonna be a lot more <laughs> amenable to doing you know whatever it is and i like to laugh and I talked to somebody this morning whose spirit guides were very different because she's very different, right? So, so they're going, it's like a personality match to an energy match. Um, and then how they get assigned is, is that way is, I think that's one of the ways. And I think they are connected to our higher self. I think that our higher self, you know, all of this, it's energy and it, it can be split infinitely. Mm -hmm. It's just like when you call an Archangel Michael. There could be a billion people calling in Archangel Michael and that's okay because Archangel Michael is able to split that energy as many times as they need. The same thing with God energy. It, it's not like pie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's, there's more than, than, than those pieces, right? So does yeah. that make sense, Kim? Do you, yeah. Does that yes. sound like something that you also- No, I agree. I agree with you totally. And my experience is that, um, I mean, I once- um, my God, now this is many years ago, showed me that we had lifetimes together. Mm. And, now, and I do believe we are part of, part of our oversoul and they come in when, uh, the, you know, our vibe, it's a vibration that we need in this lifetime. 
to, to make, to get our soul purpose met. Yes. And, um, for instance, if you're a healer, you're going to have a healer guide. If you're a librarian, you're going to have a librarian guide, you know, I mean, <clears throat> it's to help you in the, in what you need. But I remember once, uh, they showed me, one of my guides showed me that I was a flower. Now it's hard to believe that I had a lifetime as a flower and he was a bee. All right. Oh, cool. But we had a lifetime together as a flower and a bee. Now we, maybe it was just for one second. I don't know. But so, so it's, it's probably more mind boggling. We, you know, we're so linear <laughs> plus or even our past present. And what about our future lives? If they're really all the same, I mean, there's, it's just a lot to think about, but I'm, but I, but I do believe that uh, they come in part of it as part of us. And we just, it's like the sole part that we need, at, you know, for that task at hand. They're here to help us. Yes. To yes. Guide us. Yes. Uh, and I've never seen uh, a negative. I would say negative. I want to just reinforce this because if somebody is calling in a, or talking to a guy that seems to have negative energy or saying negative, that would not be of a higher source. And that's so, not your guide. In my opinion, that's not your guide. That's not your guide. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Always going to be positive and uplifting. Now they might be funny. They might, yeah. they might poke a little fun at me, but they never, ever, ever say anything bad about me or make me feel bad. Um, as a matter of fact, I feel joyful. I feel like laughing. I, I, I find my body lifting up when I think about them, when I connect with them. Yes. Yes. And do you think that your guides have changed in the last year or two? <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. And I, I feel like we have these helper guides. Uh -huh. So I got some new helper guides um, and they, and sometimes they come in and I don't ask for them now. So of course there's times when I need help. Like I'm going to give you a very good example. Um, I did my taxes a few weeks ago and normally it takes me three days and I literally gnaw. I mean, I'm just, it's just so stressful for me. And this time I got smart and I said, okay, I'm going to be doing my taxes tomorrow. I would like a guide to come in. That's an accountant or someone that understands that I don't like numbers and I don't understand numbers. So I need somebody that understands that. And I would like some help. I sat down and did all my taxes in record time, record time. And I know that's, their assistance. I was in the flow with them. They, I, we were working together. Wow. I'm going to do that. Cause you know, I'm still behind. I mean, I've started and like, I'm still not done. Call them in. That's what happened to me. Every time it would be weeks and weeks and I would put it off and then I would, you know, forget something and have to redo it. it it's just, oh, it's probably the thing I look less, least forward to <laughs> all year, every year. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So call in your guides. You know, I, I know people that call in guides for parking spaces. Don't you do that? Well, I, I don't call it. A, you know who I call it in? Who, who do I call? I don't know. I just call. I just say it to the universe. I don't necessarily call in a guide. I just say, um, I'm going to be finding a park. Thank you for, I say it in an affirmation. Thank you for helping me find a parking spot right now. And it works. Yeah. Yeah. It usually does work, but I, I, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. I, do, I always just say, thank you for doing this. Thank you for this. So whatever energy to happen. is responsible for this. Thank you. Yeah. And the thank you is a big thing to be thankful. It is a big thing for, I mean, that does change our vibration in our heart, changes the vibration of every cell of our mind, body, spirit, you know, that, that gratitude is, is big. I know you've talked about gratitude a lot. And, it, and it's been proven. I mean, this is science that we're talking about now that, you yeah. know, being grateful and having gratitude actually can impact your body in positive ways. Yes. And, and, and it can raise your vibration. So if you're struggling with this, whatever it is that might be going on in your life that, that might be pulling you down or making you feel less happy than you normally are, you can do a gratitude list. You know, you can come up with 50 things that you're grateful for. And the, the magic here is that when you get to 20, you've counted your fingers and your toes and, you know, you've counted your kids and the house and the vehicle and whatever. And then you start looking for things to be grateful for. And that's when the shift 
happens. That's when the magic happens because then you say, wow, okay, wow, that the flowers are blooming. I didn't even know they were blooming and look, they're blooming. I'm grateful for that. So it, when you start looking for things to be grateful for, you realize how much you have to be grateful for and that shifts your energy tremendously. Wonderful. And that's another, uh, something we can all use right now. The whole energy thing. I just, ah, uh, right. You're the best. You're the energy. You're the best energy person that I, that I know that I've ever met. I, I mean, you get it. So you can help us get it. Well, it's been hard lately. Hmm. Yeah. The other day, I know I was, I called you. I said, Hey, Susan, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing so good. <laughs> I'm not doing good. Because of the news, right? Right, exactly. the news. Because, yeah, you, it's like uh, some toxic addiction. Like when you start watching it, it's hard to turn it off. I mean, yeah. that's how they design it, right? They, we've, we're the 24 news cycle now. It used to be news was on at 6 p.m. or whatever. And now you get caught in the loop. And you can't get out of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, and I don't watch it as, I mean, I just, it's off and on for me. One day, yes. I mean, I watch it oh, a little yeah. bit, you know, every day. Something a little every day, but. You know, it doesn't take much when we're an empath to to have it saturate our being. Yeah. You know, so that that's a danger. And how do you release? So so the other day when you when you had gotten a bit too much of that uh, kind of negativity, how did you turn it around? How did you yeah. uh, move past that? Yeah, well, I, I turned on Seinfeld, and yeah. I watched I watched some reruns of Seinfeld, which is funny. You know, I think he's funny. Um, but then, so then I, uh, then I went to something else. I forgot. I think it was Gaia, Gaia TV, but even Gaia TV can be heavy. Yes, <laughs> yes it can. That's why comedy is king. Yes. Comedy. And I've heard of people healing breast cancer. I mean, I've heard of healing breast cancer with comedy. Laughter. Laughter. Joy. Yep. Yeah. So that I would just want to encourage anybody who's watching and who needs a little boost because I've gosh, we all do. And I, I, I want to just say this with such heartfelt that we that to also to reach out in community around this, like I reached out to you the other day said you want to talk, you know, and, and as well, I just watch Seinfeld. <laughs> but, but so it's nice to have somebody, your pet, a person, nature, talk, go talk to the tree, if you don't have anybody, you know, go Go put your back. They say that's one of the best things. Put your back against that tree trunk and feel the nature, you know, because tree and earth are one being. And if earth is truly in the 5D now, 4D, 5D, I don't even know. Is it really, is, is it that black and white? I don't think so, but. I don't think so, yeah. Yeah, but if if the tree is a higher vibration than we are, probably it is <laughs> and wants to heal and help and is so connected to the earth. What a wonderful place to just put your back up against a tree. Or you give it love, give it love, you know, send it love yes. um, and receive the love or talk to the tree. How are you? What do you need? Are you thirsty? You know, how, how are you doing? You know, just, or just sit there and love on it and, and right. have it feel the love come back to you. It's very yeah. healing. Uh, sit on the ground if, if the weather is, you know, cooperating where you are, laying down on the ground, um, you know, yeah. going to water sources, um, picking up leaves, you know, like sometimes the guides talk about tactile, like you're saying, put your back against the tree, but you can also just pick up and hold a branch or hold a leaf yes. in your hand um, yes. and connect that way too. Yes. And Even just grounding. Think, thinking about that makes me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. once in a while, when I'm walking in nature, if I have a question, and this is a shamanic tool, if I have a question, I might just think of the question ahead of my, in my mind, and then I'm going to go ask the tree, the question yeah. or the bush or wherever I'm drawn to. Yeah. That's but, such a great idea. Isn't that a great idea? Mm -hmm. And especially if you hold, just like you were saying, holding the leaf, or behind, and of course, when you hold it, you hold it with tender, loving care, right? And they know. Yeah, yeah. it's true. They love the earth. They love human energy. They want us. I think this is such a good thing that 
at this time in our lives here on earth, we've gotten so disconnected from nature. And that's not really how we're meant to live. I think we're meant to live more, you know, connected to nature. And so mm -hmm. doing that creates that connection. You're sending love, you're getting love, and you could even get guidance. That's just yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. And I know that when I was in Ecuador, the trees told me more and more people are going to be more heart open to trees and have more interspecies communication. I love trees. Yeah. Oh, That's I fantastic. know. And they, I actually, I felt like they knew when I was walking, like now I was walking in the forest, I knew that they were watching me. It's, I don't know how they watch, right? But it's a, a sense of being watched. Yeah. But anyway, Perfect. so what else would you like to share about yourself? I know we're going to do some classes. We haven't finalized everything, but we have them in our minds, what we're, what, that we're doing one coming up soon. But what else would you, would you want to talk about to oh share? Oh my gosh. I just want to send love to everybody. I just feel um, there's just a lot of fear and um, sort of um, anxiety, right? In, in the energy, being an empath. If you allow yourself now, now a lot of us don't realize this and it just comes in it. We don't realize we have a choice, but you have a choice to open up your senses and test the energy, but you can also sort of just kind of close down and say, you know what, that's a bit much for me. I'm going to take a step back from the energy. But as I, as I, as I consciously open up to the energy, I got to say that as dark as things are right now with the Ukraine and the different things that are happening, I see light. I see mm -hmm. light coming in. I mm -hmm. see light flooding into our consciousness, into every cell of our body. I, I see awareness, awakening, um, and just this beautiful light coming in. And that, and that's interesting because that just hit me this morning, actually, um, that I, that I thought, okay, Something is shifted. Something is shifted now. It's almost as if we pushed something out of our eyesight or away from us a little bit so that the sun could come through. Mm, that's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. We need wow. that. And I think we just be open to it and just know that the more light we can let in, um, the more joy, the more happiness. And here's one thing I would like to say. I went through this too um we're we feel guilty some mm -hmm. of us being mm -hmm. happy some of us mm -hmm. are literally not going to dinner out um safely with covid but some of us are literally not allowing ourselves to be happy because so much so many other people are struggling and and there's so much darkness out there but yes. it doesn't help them if if we yes. shut our light off it doesn't help them Actually, what they told me was if, if each human would accept joy and love and happiness in our bodies, when we went to pray for those people or send energy there, we would send so much more. Yes. It would go so much further, be so much bigger. Um, yes. You know, it makes sense, right? If we're depleted, yes. yep. when we go to give, it's not much. I can't give much. So if you'll fill yourself up with love and joy and happiness and humor and relaxation, you're going to be so much more effective at helping your family, at sending prayers and love out to anybody that need it. Yeah, I totally agree. This is a more, more than ever is the time we need to take care of ourselves. More than ever. More than ever. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree with you on the light. Because it is a, you know, and I think I've said this before that the, the, the angels that are helping, mm -hmm. it's so thick and they mm -hmm. want to help, right? This is, this is the turnaround time for sure. It is, it's dark, but it's sometimes darker, darkest before the dawn. And I think that's where we are. And I think that what Kim and I are trying to tell you is the dawn is coming. It's the sun is rising, that everything is going to be Okay and take good, good care of yourself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan Lynn. Thank you for being here today. Thank it was you, such Kim. a, such a fun, uh, and joyful time to share with you. So blessings to you.
Blessings to you. I always have so much fun. Uh, Kim and I, this is how we teach. It's like we just, we connect somehow and we're off to the races. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I look forward to it too. When we, when we, when we decide what, and we're going to post about that when we do. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye everybody. Thanks everybody.